The creation of Mount Elgon in 1993 from forest reserve to a national park bred numerous conflicts over land between frontline communities and the Uganda Wildlife Authority, UWA, a body mandated by an act of parliament to protect and conserve what later turned to be the regional national treasure. The current national park was previously a forest reserve until 1993 when it was incorporated under Uganda Wildlife Authority because of the mismanagement of the resources, because the people were just plundering, people were just entering, digging in any way they wanted. So when it became a national park, at least it has restricted some people from doing some illegal activities. These conflicts arose from the fact that while drawing the boundaries of the park, the exercise was never transparent as coordinates were not properly recorded to separate community land from that of the park. National Park came in. The relationship, most especially with our people, the Parker people, it was not good. Because people who were going to the park, when they were got arrested there, they were mistreated so much, most especially the, the male people, they were caned terribly and some of them were even hospitalized. Besides that, those ones who were arrested, and they, if they were not to pay anything to the poor people, they were taken to prison. And as I talk, even some of them are still there. The most seriously affected communities are in the districts of Mbale, Manafwa, Sironko, Bududa, Kapchora, and Namisindwa in eastern Uganda. Victims in these districts would be harassed, beaten, raped, and arrested. The problems I encountered as a person, I have my place in the park, neighboring them. So one time, park rangers got me there while I was working. While I was with my dog, they beat me up made me carry my dog on my back and took me up to their park police station. They continued beating me up. So when my relatives heard about it, this is because the park rangers wanted 300,000 as a fine, which I did not have because of my state of life. So the LC2 chairman of Wahawaha Parish picked 180,000, gave it in as my bail after they had wanted to take me to Mbale Central Police Station. At baseline, 37% of people in Elgon region confirmed to have been victims of various forms of human rights. Notable cases included land evictions and grabbing, poor quality of education, delayed and manipulated justice, denial of access to their ancestral land, illegal and false arrests, a prohibition from being part of the decision-making process, lack of access to information, insecurity, theft of property, food and harassment. Our intervention has been in a way that we as monitoring and we document these activities. We have also involved ourselves on how do we uh, create a, a situation that cr looks at a, an improvement, that they don't continue cases of killings, cases of rape. Killings come from both uh, members of the community and also the Uganda Wildlife Authority you know, on trying to manage the process of managing and protecting the park. And we have registered cases of rape, cases of torture in that kind of situation. So these are now, and many of them we have also had them referred. We have made the referrals uh, in, and worked together, partnered with a number of institutions that are on saying how we can mitigate those factors. This standoff prompted Action for Development, ACFORD, with support from the Swedish Foundation for Human Rights to intervene and advocate for the respect, protection and fulfillment of the rights of frontline communities living around Mount Elgon National Park in Uganda through a project called named Promoting Equitable, Just and Accountable Conservation in Mount Elgon Conservation Area. We also identified that there had been conflict or tension between Uganda Wildlife Authority and the frontline community members. And yet, 
we know that uh, both the UA officials and the frontline community members are supposed to collaborate in sustainably uh, conserving the environment and this was not happening. So as a result of what we found on the ground, we engaged the leadership of the four districts where we are implementing this program so that we could find out what actually we could do with them in promoting just accountable and sustainable uh, conservation. ACFORD identified and trained 20 community-based human rights monitors to spearhead community engagements on understanding human rights education on conservation laws and policies, referral points for reporting and handling human rights violations. Uh, we've had uh, several interventions in, the, in, in that region, but one of the key interventions that we have worked with um, um, are the community monitors. Uh, community monitors are uh, uh, community women and men that were identified and trained uh, in understanding uh, gender concepts, in understanding uh, human rights, education, in understanding conservation laws and policies, as well as human rights-based approaches, and how best they can go back and cascade uh, similar information in the different communities. These men and women supported the mitigation of human rights violations of marginalized indigenous communities in Mount Elgon conservation area. And we have seen um, a reduction in terms of uh, uh, violations, in terms of shootings among the frontline communities and our officials. We have, we have seen reduced tensions among the two communities. And um, as we close this project, at least the community monitors who are the ambassadors at community level will continue to relay this information and will act as gatekeepers. Bosiko Chisali is the head of community monitors in Bujitimwa sub-county in Soronko district. He was trained by ACFORD to engage the community on best environmental conservation practices. He is actively engaged in mobilizing the communities and facilitating dialogues between the communities and UWA authorities. So we came out with a program that we should start with how best we can we protect the ecosystem, beginning with the Montegon ecosystem. We started by bringing a resource, a vocational resource training center where we are, where, where we, where we are. That if, if we can begin training people from here, beginning from children, uh, both Gauchar and the, the youth, other, and the other people in the community, the value for biodiversity approach. So that this biodiversity approach can lead into sustainable livelihood and we can stay there, the forest can stay and we can stay. So we engaged on land management. To mitigate the encroachment of the national resource, various income generating activities were introduced to the community. They included tree planting, fruit growing, animal rearing and beekeeping. We saw that this project of beekeeping can help us to conserve the environment. Because the bees, we sight them under the trees. If you don't have enough trees, the bees don't do well. So we planted the trees and we integrated the project we put in beekeeping. And under beekeeping, we also make our own beehives. These beehives, we have involved the men, the boys, and the girls especially during the COVID time. Two years into the project, communities that used to be resistant to the transition of the forest to the national park appreciate the role this natural resource has towards their communities. Security-wise, the community plays a role because if they, cannot, if they don't hunt those animals, you realize that it will remain as a park and will continue attracting tourists. So as a community, I think we are, it's the ownership of the area. The more they reserve it, the more it becomes of value.
Civil society organizations and the district leadership have played a crucial role in ensuring a sustained conservation approach through awareness creation, sensitization, and information sharing. Ackford has also utilized media campaigns through radio shows. The word Ua today means Ua. And when they see Ua stuff, they take off and they make allegations that they were chased and they fell off cliffs. Those are those allegations that are very many. I don't want to deal to dwell deep in them, but it is clear that human beings at the front line of the park have misunderstood Ua. For them, they think they have come to kill. But I want, I've also gone down the ground and told them, no, we need to know that this is a natural resource. It's a resource for very many things. It's not just a resource for Ua and the government, but it's a resource for us. People are staying in Mount Egon area. We benefited a lot from them. And the many people have appreciated. When the Ackford came in, at least some of this violation of human rights came into light. Some of us, that's when we learned that there is violation of rights by errant officers of Uganda Wildlife Authority. I may not say that all officers, but errant ones. Two, uh, Ackford helped to follow the cases to its, to its conclusion, like a court cases whereby sexual harassment from our women and girls at the National Park. Uh, Ackford also at least has reduced the gap between the community and the conserving agency, Uganda Wildlife Authority. Local leadership say Ackford's interventions have bridged the empowerment gap between women, hence reducing on the rate of domestic violence. Women too were equally economically empowered. Our community, we make a trip to our old ramu bukuba gano. By giriza ba ababa abantu ba fui katumu make a trip to our ramu intaro. Aba na ba yaze ya abade abakuba kadi this Aquaford has done a lot because at first we were so beaten by men and not even providing things at home. You a woman, you have to go for firewood, you bring, you sell, then you buy what you want. But as Aquaford came, it has trained these men, now they are okay. Uganda Wildlife Authority commends Ackford for the interventions which have changed the mindsets of frontline communities. Unlike in the past, these communities are somehow receptive to conservationists. I want to thank Ackford for what you have done. The previous years, where the communities were so wild. But for now, where this project has been on, the tension is a little bit low. And I could advise and are happy as you write some proposals to extend this hand to, an, to other districts of Serbeni region because we have issues, more issues there than the Kisulan where, where, where Akfot has been, has been participating.